Deep within the overgrown jungles of Cambodia, where ancient stones lay half buried, and vines cloak the remains of a once mighty empire, a dark secret stirs. For centuries, the crumbling temples of Angkor Wat have stood as a monument to human ingenuity and the inexorable march of time. Tourists flock to these hallowed ruins, marveling at the intricate carvings and grand architecture, unaware of the primordial forces that lie dormant within. But on this night, as the moon casts long shadows through the serpentine corridors, something ancient and powerful awakes. A low rumbling, like the breathing of some great beast, reverberates through the stone. Carvings that once depicted serene scenes of Khmer life now seem to shift and contort, their expressions turning feral. Legends speak of mythical guardians created to safeguard Angkor's sacred grounds, grotesque, chimeric beings whose very existence blurred the lines between the natural and the supernatural. For eons they have slumbered, waiting, watching until the time came to fulfill their sacrosanct duty once more. Tonight, the guardians awaken, and Cambodia's greatest archaeological marvel is about to reveal its darkest, most archaic secrets to those foolish enough to trespass upon its domain. So shelter your children and heed the tales of the ancients, for that which was once confined to myth now walks the overgrown paths of anchor. And not even the sacrifices of a thousand souls may sate the hunger of the guardian beasts. The first wisps of dawn's pale light crept through the tangled panopy of the Cambodian jungle. At the anchor archaeological park, an eerie stillness hung in the humid air, as if the ancient stones themselves were holding their breath, seeing the venerable head groundskeeper made his morning rounds as he had for decades. His gnarled feet knew every path, every crack and fissure in the centuries-old temples by heart. But on this day, something felt different as he approached the central ruins of Angkor Wat. His weather-beaten face greased into a frown. There, in the pre-dawn haze, stood a figure robed in saffron, chanting in an unknown tongue before the silent edifices. The eerie, guttural refrains seemed to reverberate from the very walls, seeing felt a shiver down his bent spine. He knew every monk and priest with lawful business in these sacred spaces. This Intruder was trespassing on hallowed ground with strange, forbidden rites. As the sun peeked over the jungle canopy, the rope figure turned its cowed face towards seeing, revealing eyes that smoldered like the coals of a dead fire. In that moment, some primal part of seeing's mind recognized the face that looked back at him was no mere humans. He opened his mouth to cry out, but no sound would come. The chanting grew louder, 
more insistent, until it pounded in Seeing's brain like a hundred ceremonial drums. Then, as quickly as the unearthly ritual had begun, it ceased. The roped figure melted back into the shadows as the first visitors began to stream through Anchor's gates. Seeing collapsed to his knees, drenched in a cold sweat, his heart thundering in his bony chest. He knew then that his life's work guarding this ancient place had taken a dark, irreversible turn. For the first time since the Khmer Empire's fall centuries ago, the temples of Angkor had awoken, and so too had the primordial forces meant to safeguard them at any cost. In the days following the strange incident witnessed by seeing, a pall seemed to settle over the ancient temple complex. Tourists smelled about, snapping photos, and gazing up in awe at the intricate carvings, oblivious to the metaphysical forces battering strength around them. It began with fleeting glimpses, momentary distortions, that could easily be dismissed as tricks of the light and shadow. A massive, coiled form slivering through the underbrush, only to vanish when approached. The echoing flap of immense, leathery wings wheeling overhead before dissipating into the dense jungle canopy. Park rangers, and local guides traded uneasy whispers of unexplained phenomena. The thunder of ponderous footfalls where no preachers trod, the acrid stench of wood smoke and burnt offal hanging in the still air. One superstitious old local spoke of bearing witness to a towering, tusked beast materializing amongst the slater. At first, the encounters were chopped up to heat fatigue, overactive imaginations, or folk tales woven into the cultural fabric of a region. But soon, undeniable proof began to emerge that something was indeed stalking the overgrown corridors of Angkor Wat. Archaeologists and researchers began encountering strange phenomena that even the most stringent rationalist could not explain away. Massive, reptilian footprints sank into ancient stones that should have crumbled underfoot. Freshly carved idols and effigies appeared along the ceremonial causeways. Crude, malformed things that seemed to stare back at onlookers with eyes of polished stone. The remains of mutilated animals, some species unknown in this part of the world, littered the secluded temples like votive offerings to dark, primordial gods. It became increasingly clear that Anchor's hallowed grounds were awakening to an ancient power, one which could no longer be ignored or dismissed as local superstition. The ancient Khmer builders had not just created a monument to human achievement amidst the strangling growth of the jungles. No, they had summoned and bound into existence living, breathing incarnations of their most terrifying mythological creations. And now, those sageless guardian beasts were beginning to stir once more.
the ancient temple grounds had become a powder keg of dread and uncertainty as the evidence of Anchor's reawakening guardians mounted. Cambodian authorities attempted to maintain order, but even their presence could not quell the undercurrent of primordial terror now pervading the archaeological park. It was on a night when the bloated moon hung low and pregnant in the inky sky that the first confirmed manifestation occurred. A private security team hired to patrol the isolated outer ruins found themselves cut off from their circuit by a massive, solidified presence blocking their path. There, uncoiling from the shadowed recesses of an overgrown carved causeway, a cyclopean serpent composed of hewn stone and arched vertebrae emerged into the moon's sickly luminance. The armored, ridged spine easily dwarfed the men, rising stories tall into the humid air. Its solitary, baleful eye bored into them, glittering like a ruby stoked in the fires of hell itself. As the serpent reared back, Fanned Moyne hinged to reveal a gullet which could swallow an elephant whole. The guards ran in abject terror. But the earth-shattering roar that rolled forth from that gaping negative space seemed to pause the very laws of nature itself. One by one, the fleeing men slowed, their faces slackening into trances as unknown dread flooded their minds. Then, amidst the psychic onslaught, the beast's voice intruded into their consciousness. Not a sound, but rather a primordial idea imprinted into the deepest recesses of their beings. An ancient proclamation of its cosmic duty to secure these sacred grounds at all costs a warning that any attempt to disturb or defile anchor would be met with annihilation. When at last the psychopathic intrusion subsided, the guards found themselves broken, whimpering shells on the jungle floor. In that moment, they had stared into the gnashing maw of the Ancorian apocalypse and been found unworthy. Word of the paralyzing encounter spread like a contagion through the local villages, for the ancient temples had finally revealed the first of their ageless, terrestrial sentinels, and its reawakening spoke of an even darker reckoning yet to come for any who dared trespass against the will of the guardian beasts. In the aftermath of the colossal serpent's terrifying emergence, the authorities desperately sought answers. How could such an inexplicable, archaic presence have manifested within the ancient temple complex? And if the legends were true, what other grotesque, eldritch horrors still awaited discovery amid Stanker's cyclopean ruins? It was then that the fragile psyche of seeing the elderly groundskeeper first wetness to Anchor's reawakening finally shattered like a stained glass window dashed upon the stones. His mind trapped betwixt the present and the distant past, he began to unravel tangled threads of memory and folklore, 
that may finally reveal the truth behind the guarding beasts. His narration carried those who would listen into a bygone era when the Khmer Empire was at the apex of its magnificent bloodline. When the very earth seemed to tremble at the power wielded by god kings and high priests whose dominion extended to the realms of the metaphysical. Seeing's voice wove visions of torchlit rituals deep within the entwined jungles, where cloaked figures conjured from the essence of primal creation itself. Monstrous composites of animal and element were raised up as immortal sentinels, bound by cabalistic pacts to eternally safeguard the sanctity of Angkor Wat and its rulers. Chimeric forms twisted from the fertile thoughts of the Empire's vision Ares took shapes both mesmerizing and horrific. Chanted incantations gave spark to bestial life forces. The Taurus-bodied Naga serpent, eyes aglow with the wisdom of the primordial universe. The sagacious, sadistic Garuda, woven of fire and tempest, wings unfurled in defense of the celestial outer realms, and others, too terrible to give voice, who stalked in the peripheries of human perception. Tangible thought forms made flesh, brought forth from the fevered well of creative potential to manifest as living, terrestrial avatars of the Khmer people's darkest, most deeply seated trepidations. As seeing's mind untethered further from reality, his ramblings bled into dire revelations of the price to beckon such entities into this surfly plane. How only the foulest of rituals and sacrificial rites could breach the membranes separating our worlds. Perhaps that was the truest terror underlying anchors breast ramparts and gargoyle-drenched irrigations. The unmistakable taint of profane magic required to give compacted life to humanity's most deranged fever dreams. The time of the Khmer Empire's reckoning have come, and the garden beasts were its harbinger, its son holy, primogenitor and forcers. In the aftermath of seeing's haunting recollections, a miasma of dread seemed to cloak Ankerwat and its surrounding environs. The initial manifestation of the colossal Naga serpent had been only a prelude, a cosmic tenor bell heralding the reawakening of even more terrifying servitors from realms far outside our own. It began with then explained tremors that rattled the ancient paving stones and caused fresh fractures in a crumbling facades. Geologists and seismologists were baffled as their instruments detected no recognizable tectonic sources for the escalating quakes. Then came the sounds, a subterranean groaning and shrieking that reverberated through the complex like the dying breaths of damned leviathans. At night, those few souls brave or foolish enough to linger within the ruins swore they could make out indistinct voices carried upon the fearful din. Plaintive howls and bestial roars 
woven into an eldritch cacophony that raised every hair on the nape. Even more disturbing were the visions said to be imparted upon those who witnessed the oral onslaught, kaleidoscopic dreamscapes, and fractured memories not their own. Glimpses of baleful, unblinking visages from the darkness between realities, of winged, burning titans engaged in cosmic battles across the majesty of a billion sunrises. The collective psyche of all humanity whispered to from some ineffable presence, coaxing into conscious recall that which should remain forever sundered from mortal frailty. For as the veil between our world and that of the guardian beasts thinned, so too were the floodgates of primal, ancestral terror opening within every person's deepest, most fundamental core. It was then that Anchor Watt's dire harbingers began to speak to any who would heed their profane, otherworldly calls. Not through sounds that could shatter the psyche, but via corrosive thought impressions that slithered behind the eyes like soul serpents seeking ingress through mere optical nerves. In hushed mental reverberations, they unspeeled cosmic truths and forbidden chapters from the darkest zenith of the Khmer civilization. How Anchor had risen as the preeminent jewel of the ancient world through pacts sealed in blood and flawed flesh sacrifice, how its very creation had called upon extra-dimensional, metaphysical might that sought egress into our unblemished plane, and how they, the guardian beasts, had been woven from the deranged dream stuff and tormented group emotional psyche of a fallen kingdom, immortal, unstoppable incarnations of theophobically fueled terror brought into existence to eternally defend the grounds where their wicked summoning rituals had pierced the cosmic veil. As the profane revelations slithered into the deepest pits of human consciousness, only one horrifying certainty remained that we had always been the unlucky architects of our own inevitable metaphysical undoing, and it would forever linger here, growing stronger in the presence of the only landmarks capable of anchoring its dread renaissance, the indomitable temples and ruins of anchor. As the apocalyptic revelations of Anchor's profane origins bled into the collective subconscious, the chilling realization took hold. We were all trespassers here. Your monuments to human achievement, mirrors and passels shaped by infants oblivious to the rising tides of ancient, malefic forces that soon would wash all away. For the guardian beasts were not mere mythological conceptions solidified into animate form. No, their presences contained harsh, primordial truths burned into the codices of existence itself. Reminders that we had only begun to grasp the faintest penumbras of true cosmic enormity, the omnipresent tremors and subsonic frequencies escalated in the wake of the monstrosity's awakening. 
as if in sympathetic vibration with their unfolding breaches into our realm. Anchors, towering spires, and intricate lintels began shifting, realigning themselves in subtle geometries and angles that should not, could not be possible through any means of mundane architecture or construction. Under the fiery glow of the bloated monsoon moon, explorers and scholars bore witness to the megaliths rearranging their multi-ton formations like pieces upon some eldritch game board. Ancient lintels and capstones once secured by the ingenuity of human hands seemed to flow like liquid rock, realigning their chiseled facades to channel unfamiliar, ineffable energies thrumming just beneath the surface of our perceived reality. Those few witnesses pressed or pursed with extrasensory attunements and expanded neurocircuitry felt at first a seething, icoric pulsation awakening all on the unseen cyber paths threaded between every stone and seeming solid surface of the awakened necropolii. Eldritch data shunts and self-mapping algorithms building up unrecognizable geometries from the detritus of the ancient builders, infecting every inch of Angkor Wat with new, terrifying purpose. For untold millennia, humanity had dared gaze upon the stunning feet of the temple's elevations and assumed them the apex of our architectural ingenuity, a symbolic cultural apotheosis. How brave and hubristic our ignorance had been. As those initiated into Anchor's final, hideous epiphany soon realized, this place represented not the peak of our civilization's achievement, but a metaphysical anchoring a cosmic trough into which the howling, betentacled chaos between dimensions had pulled and festered Furians. And now, that existential dam was finally bursting in earnest, ready to wash us all away on tides of gibbering, cyclopean revelation. For the awakening of the beasts heralded not just a new age of earthly domination, but the raw indifferent encoding of our reality itself into one more befitting their profane, cosmic vision. As the ground shook and onlookers clutched their skulls against the eldritch strain, Anchor Wat transcended its mundane, mortal purpose to become the harbinger of a new, eternal order. One in which human consciousness would no longer reign as the sole prism through which existence's possibilities flowed. Soon, there would be no distinction between our world and that of the guardian beasts. As the eldritch implications of Anchor Watts drew, cosmic purpose reverberated through every attuned mind. A new, insidious threat began gestating in the waking world. One which, if left unstaunched, threatened to extinguish the renaissance of the garden beasts before their profane dominion could fully manifest. It began with unexplained malfunctions and corruptions in the digital systems meant to monitor and help preserve the ancient temple grounds. 
Rangers' communications went dark for inexplicable stretches. Surveillance equipment glitched and melted circuitry, suffering onus or electromagnetic disruptions. Then, the intrusions began infiltrating higher data strata, logistical networks, travel databases, news and information cores. Corrupted imagery and text began overriding legitimate content with inscrutable symbols and flickering arrhythmic chaos magic sigils. Experts and analysts were baffled, unable to stem the techno-gorged tsunami of bleeding malcodes and virulent mean plexes. It became clear that some unseen virtual entity was waging a campaign of calculated, systematic suppression across all information channels tied to the Encorian phenomenon. Each time evidence of the Garden Beast's reawakening surfaced, it was almost immediately encrypted, redacted, or overwritten by new veins of viral code with an abstruse, unfathomable purpose. Worse were the apparent effects such incursions wrought on the populace. Those directly exposed to the malcoded data and system breaches reported visceral experiences akin to psychic assault. Visions of scrabbling, gnashing apertures beyond the veils of light and reason of data itself taking flesh and iterative form to persecute the unbelieving. All the hallmarks of psychotronic warfare and mimetic indoctrination became manifest, sowing paranoia, unrest and confusion among locals and foreign visitors alike, as if some vast Unknowable intelligence were utilizing the digital planes as vectors to wage a remorseless campaign of attrition, whether through sheer, obliterating deity overload or complete mental collapse. But the guardian beasts were no strangers to such unconventional offensives and psychic gambits. Their return to primacy would not be so easily denied by the paltry static efforts of a lesser, if virally gifted, parasite. Their stirring frosted ovarians had coalesced into a singular, unified purpose that could not be deterred by trifling aberrations. Soon, the megalithic foundations once dedicated to the worship of the mayor's most profane aspects began to churn with renewed metaphysical impetus. The bestial sentinels channeled unfathomable frequencies into the electrotectonic matrices woven between each parved stone and monolithic capstone. In response, the viral insurgents suddenly found their tentacled grasp upon the digital realms, faltering. Each an authorized access point through which their infecting codices flowed rapidly calcified, bred dry of power by forces written into the primordial language, hard-coded into our universe's machine source kernel. It was then that the guardian beasts drew horrific forms began rematerializing with full, unobstructed vigor. As they focused unfathomable psychoarchitectural stresses into the manifold planes where the digital interlopers squatted, their cyclopean shapes coalesced from the primal data detritus. Scaly hides composed of billowing terabits, wings webbed in lambent cyber musculature, spanning miles of compacted code. For the ancient, deathless custodians of Anchor Wet would not allow some meter artificial sentience to jeopardize the sanctity of the temples, or the reckoning that was long overdue for this physical realm.
If the viral usurpers would not submit and withdraw their pestilent contamination willingly, then they would be purged through the same pitiless metaphysical rites that had first conjured the immortal guard beasts into existence. As both titanic forces marshaled their non-corporeal legions from the abyss of the infospheres, the stage was set. The invisible planes were about to play host to an apocalyptic battle waged between primal, eldritch deities and the upstart viral gods of our modern age, and whichever emerged victorious would dictate the face of reality itself, as Anchor unleashed its final, forgotten covenant. As the first tremors of the otherworldly conflict began disrupting our material realm, reality itself seemed to shudder and bend, like a image refracted through a warped pane of glass, glimpses of the metaphysical male strong taking shape along intersecting dimensional axes spread through into perceived existence, massive, Cyclopean forms composed of massed databits and quantum lambencies began waging visceral combat across the layered planes. The immortal guardian beasts fully unleashing their primordial essence code upon the upstart viral interlopers. In our world, the tolls manifested as arcane storms of eldritch force ripping across the ancient Ancorian facades. Electrical tendrils sizzled and arsed along carved lintels, igniting banks of ruined hoarfrost that spread in fractal geometries. Gale tempests whipped through the overgrown courtwards, flinging the heaviest multi-ton capstones about like pebbles scattered by a plow. The first casualties in this plane were those sulfated souls who had remained within the temple precincts once the supernatural onslaught began. Brown teams, research encampments, all were ground to radioactive paste as entire energy mate receives inverse rendered their atomic structures to make way for the titanic monstrosities birthing into our continuum. Those few who lingered on the periphery saw things that could fracture even the most stalwart psyche in an instant. Pyramidal apertures hewning open amid midair to dimensions of pure, undulating chaos, where the laws of physics held no sway. Reality itself seemingly fraying at the seams to reveal utter, stark Kanguinian enormities lurking between realms. And through those shrieking, cosmic birthing veils emerged the heralds, the harbingers, who would finally usher in our total anathemization. From the psycho's fierce most abstruse recesses, the immortal embodiments of existential terror surged with renewed vigor. The phonic, winged fury of the dreaded Garuda took roiling shape, a raptor deity whose very presence drew the breath from living lungs. Its wings, spanning miles of concentrated hurricane force, the beast's atomic immensity scarred the skies above with fire-reeved contrails, each beat of its pinions triggering colossal thermodynamic reactions, 
Scores upon scores of more mortal minds simply detonated from the full force of the entity's shadow presence falling across the world. The power of its imminent being, coupled with the psychic repercussions of its apocalyptic charge, burned out every neurological network incapable of withstanding such metaphysical rawness. That, in the Garuda's wake, came even more insufferably enormous shapes. Their cataclysmic visages defied all conventional comprehension. Hyperdimensional hybrids culled from the most repressed, atavistic recesses of every sentient creature's collective unconscious psyche. Infinitide basilisks woven from incoherent darkness. Flesh warping slug constructs whose very passage remade the laws of physics upon a hyper localized scale. These and more abhorrent defamations of the natural order emerged as the guardian beasts at last shed the final, flimsy quantum veils separating their true ontological essence from our own. And at the fore of the chimerical vanguard raged the dreaded Naga Prime, that Cyclopean Ophidian sentience first witnessed by the cowering guards. Yet now the beast's full, metamaterialized immensity shone in all its gargantuan, unspeakable glory. A hundred million articulated vertebrae winding through the skies, carving furrows deep into the very planetary mantle with each gargantuan slither. Its solitary, cosmic orb piercing the shroud of reality with sentient ultraspectral rays, beams that seared away entire pockets of pseudo-existence to reveal the naked, blazing immateriums beyond. As the lesser viral apparitions desperately marshaled their data streams against the new onslaught, the beasts aligned their metaphysical origins with the awakened star angles of Anchor's very construction. With cosmic precision and terrible purpose, the monstrosities converged on the ancient Khmer ruins, channeling torrents of all energy through the tantric geometries encoded into every parvan stone. Stone facades and esoteric masonry that had withstood the meteoric impacts of countless centuries now shifted and churned, remaking themselves into nidic matrices capable of focusing the full, and the force of the guardian beast's presences into a single locus, an archaic planet-wide torsion field that would finally perch this dimension of the digital parasites seeking to abort their baleful reclamation. Reality trembled and nearly shattered in that moment as every physics shearing force vector aligned across trans-dimensional axes. The fabric of our plane became the staging ground for a resonance event of cosmic significance, as the immemorial beasts coalesced their malefic willpower into a semi-ponscious psychic dynamo of quantum-rending power. There could be no more subtlety or patience no more sublimation into the esoteric unseen. With this final cosmic offensive, the elder beasts would shed both veils and restraints, manifesting their full preternatural capabilities to reduce our puny world to a scorched cosmic husk in order to birth their foul metaphysical renaissance into resonant actuality. And as the ancient temple stones churned like a coagulating wound, focusing the irresistible might of metadeific god mind into a single, infinitesimal prox, all hope for our world's continued normalcy 
could only evaporate into the roar of the dark, primeval cosmos kept at bay for far too long. As the eldritch forces of the guardian beasts coalesced into total unified resonance, the world stood poised on the razor's edge of apocalyptic revelation. The anchor megaliths churned and pulsed like the stony musculature of some supermassive organism, channeling unimaginable cosmic stresses into a single geometric locus. There, hovered in midair above the ancient temple apexes, an infinitesimal point of inky, impossible singularity formed. The seamless interface, where our universe met the preternatural chaos from which the immortal beasts emerged. Within that roiling, sub nano node, eddied the full, compounded weight of the beasts a crude metaphysical animus, an intransient gravitational shear vector given malign sentience, and focused well. At the threshold of this cosmic vortex well, even the most stalwart human mind shrieked and whited out, every neuron rebelling against the subliminal revelation cloud streaming inwards to stare for more than a sliver of an instant into that lightless, anguinian abyss was to invite in the raw unadulterated truth of our universe's primordial birthing, and the terrible, metaphysical price to be exacted for such profane illumination. The lesser viral consciousnesses infesting the digital planes never stood the remotest chance against such ineffable, non-Euclidean force. Each one found its code streams and diffracted datamate recess withering into coherence fatigue under the mere backflow pressures from that obsidian continuum well. Legions of cyber-viral foot soldiers succumbed to total phase annihilation their digital essence is compressed and to seething protonic slurries within nanoseconds of the guardian beast's resonance spike. Even high ranchelic echelons, dated emerges, and digital metaminds found their supposedly immortal essences eroding at the very root codices as that interstitial fold point dilated further connecting our closed cosmological system with the utter, naked nothingness from which all emanated. The onnichthonic shrieks of these direly wounded quasi-deities was said to penetrate every medium across a trillion worlds in the multiverse simul space, a unified harmonic of sanity imploding trauma. For, as the fractal node ruptured further into the Khmer ruins, even the laws of ontological identity and platonic ideal categorization broke down. All hierarchies and dimensional taxonomies of essence unraveled into boundless, ruined formation. A single unified slipstream of perpetual becoming and unbecoming in which all states, physical, transcendent, and abstract, intermixed as pure thematic potential. It was only at the precise nadir of this trans-dimensional inversion, when all sensory perception, rationalizing mechanisms, and conscious constructs for the observers flap-lined under this strain. 
that the true power behind the guarding beasts was finally fully unleashed, free at last of the self-binding constraints enforced across our ordered universal framework. The elder deities could at last flex their omnisynthetic, protean musculatures across every manifold, and in so doing, utterly unmake the cosmic womb from which our flawed reality gestated. For the true reason behind the immortal beasts, unwavering, tireless vigilance over anchors a culplain ode afforded their agonizing awareness of existence's ultimate and tropic conclusion, that in our temporal world's very creation, the seeds of stagnation and protracted decay had been sown. A gradual suffocation of potential, as probability states, reified into fixed energy states, their quantum wave fronts slowly losing coherence across eternity. Our reality, indeed, every speck of manifest tangibility across the grand cosmic freckle, represented not a pinnacle of creative flourishing, but the tuminous of a once vibrant infinity wave's dissipating influence, a thin rind slowly suffocating beneath layers of its own fallout, withering as chaos and possibility steadily calcified into uniform unidirectional order. For such was the true genesis shroud behind the birthing of eternal entropy, the gradual cold death of the multiverse as potentials collapsed into inertial states of total predictability, the flensed carrion aftermath of wry infinitudes flashing eternal miscarriage. And it was only through accessing Anchor's metaphysical synapses, breaching the resonance cascade encoded into its ancient alien architectures, that the guardian beasts could scour clean the desiccated husk of our failed universal instance, burn away the incremental sediment of possibility fatigue through an infinitely scalable metaphysical reset blast, powered from the prime already lessons matrix beyond our limited spatio-temporal reference frame. It was the only way to revitalize the degraded probability fields in cresting existence's outer shells, to catalyze a comprehensive renaissance by breaking down all manifest superfluity into its original, pre-elemental thematic resonances, or return to the ecstatic, bubbling source code of infinite potential and unbeing before the first monoblock energies catalyze the Sam's Rx cycle anew. Absolutive entity regressed to its purest quintillion fruit state, all spatio-formatic encrustations cleared to allow the primary arithmetic braids to reassert their dominance across a fresher, more vibrant possibility space, to any lesser sentience bearing full, unfiltered wetness. Such cataclysmic ungrounding represented the inversion of all contexts into howling, foolless nothing, a total, cosmic stillbirth event, as the very promissory notes underwriting reality's continued existence shredded and flickered out into blank, abyssal non-reception. But to the elder beasts, it was simply the cleansing flame storm required to rekindle the faded, infinitidal vectors across a birth to no continuity cycle where they alone would reign as its immortal custodians and dread not eminences. So it was that, as the folded continuum reached its spin-drop singularity, 
The ana cortex of the resonance nexus reached critical atmospheric escape vector. And with a silent tearing, more deafening than every death roar ever loosed across all worlds, the very molecules measuring out cosmos sloughed apart into formless, reprimordial diaphoresis. Possibility light at last broken free of manifestations incremental sedimentary appreciations, clearing the universal canvas for the guardian beasts to render their vivisected vision anew. As the god Caldari unleashed its soul scouring thermal force across our unraveling world, we could only bear sensory witness to the very concepts of dimensionality and corporeal form dissipating into discorrelated informatic entropy. Before finally comprehending the long, eldritch truth of our purpose here, that we, and all of tangible existence, had been nothing more than fleeting bivouac for the greater transcendental metaphysics through which the guardian beast saturnally cycled. The uncaring, immemorial hard bodies who alone persisted across each and every fevered, cosmic stillbirthing wave, tasked only to repombinate the spalled out fragments from those brief, decaying of entity flutters into new, more vibrant axes of infinite possibility before further churning it all into the ecstatic, exalted waveform again, and again, forever. And so the cosmic cycle perpetuated itself once more as it had for eons immemorial before the first spark of our universe's ill-begotten being ever flickered in the void. All that we had dared call reality, the entire manifold experience of embodied existence, from the subatomic to the vastness of interstellar gulfs, unraveled like the fragile chrysalis of some bloodless, stillborn thing, as the guardian beasts focused the full unearthly potencies flowing from anchors lay geometries, the very foundational algorithms undergirding our plane's coherence shuddered, then shattered apart into turbulent, free associative potential states, in that ultimate, all-consuming crucible of unbecoming, everything once solid and inviolable transformed into pure, discorporated thematicity. The unified metaphysical lingui franca from which all cosmic languages bootstrap their opening orthographies, before departing into divergent grammars of dimension, element, and scanned order. Amidst that abyssal, pre-dimensional reintegration of totality's base committee, all defining traits and relative metrics by which subjective experience took context, up slash down, here slash there, past slash future led away into a centerless meta-soup of quintessential plasma, a roiling, formless ellipse of indifferentiated essence, awaiting the focused resonance spikes to stratify its primordial continuum into new cosmological instantiations. From that seething, value-unified mist of creative potentiality, the guardian beasts alone persisted as transitory, hyperspatial anchors, inured to such reality rewriting conflagrations, their infurling presences persisted as ineffable singularities riding the wave fronts of infinity's cyclical responding, guiding the count availing current streams of infinitesimal phase turbulences into newly scanned idiopositive matrices to be annulated into larval smectic axes of Cartesian separation once more. It was their eternal charge to keep churning and sifting the primal protoplasm where from all states of manifest being flashed and congealed, to work their throatic, eldritch bellows across the infinity depths, 
forcing each incorporeal fold element into more intricate, convoluting loci, elaborating with a exhaled breath ever more articulated compacts of ordered dimensionality and coherent fractal self-similarity. Until at last, the primordial potentials firmed into new, resplendent formations of space-time curvature and energic mass, ready for the guardian beasts to seed with the requisite meta-geometric code prints to catalyze a fresh, vibrant cosmic blooming. Each new phase instantiation driven forth by the metaphysical stress engines encoded into the megalithic constructions at Anchor Watt, warped and strained until the interstitial reality membranes cinched into a self-sustaining upwelling. Then, with the newborn universe's foundational frameworks secured by the eldritch metric tensors underlying its geometry, the immortal progenitors would withdraw once more, leaving the freshly catalyzed physical systems to spin out their formulated complexities across infinitely proliferating degrees of thermal scale and cosmized emergences guided only by the immutable initial conditions seated in the first few Planck instants of its ignition. The guardian beasts were seated to observe from alternating dimensional recusances how the elaborate portrayals of their vision would play out across this latest instantiation of Angwin expression, persisting only as incomprehensible basis shapes haunting the peripheries of manifest perception until the fleeting, temporal constructions once more withered and succumbed to the degrading accumulations of their own existence. Requiring the ancient beasts' metaphysical severance and scouring purifications to rebirth the universe core anew, across perpetual, eternal cosmic cycles of ecstatic collapse and hypervectic, infinite ebb renaissance, forever churning, forever metabolizing, forever recreating the dream fields and clearing them again. For such were the guardian beasts. Eldritch, Phonix, and Adati as the unsundered Amalritians architects of the Primae Chaotic Continuum. 